Oh. All right, welcome back everybody to yet another show here on the O'Shea Duke Jackson main channel. My, I, I'm sorry, uh, here with uh, my brother Antoine Wade. We had a little bit of a delay starting the show, but it seems like everything is okay now. And we have a really good show today. And this show is called How Black Men Can Be Discovered in the Workplace. It's one of the first shows uh, that I'm done doing like this ever on the channel. Uh, me and uh, brother Antoine Wade of Black Heights, we did a show on my O'Shea Vlogcast channel the other day. And that show was called How African Americans Can uh, Do Very Well or Be Successful in Corporate America. So we're going to kind of do a little bit of recap on that. And I want to get into a little more details based on another good video that he did. So I want to introduce to some and present to others, uh, Antoine Wade of the Black Heights YouTube channel. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing fantastic, O'Shea. Doing absolutely fantastic, brother. Thank you so much for uh, having me on the show again today. And I'm looking forward to uh, interacting with the guests and yourself and, um, and, uh, and, and talking a little bit more about the subject, brother. All right. So for those people who may not uh, know you, because it's actually on my other channel, this is on my main channel, uh, let's talk a little bit about yourself your experience in corporate America and all of that? Yeah, so let me do a quick introduction. Um, I'm Antoine Wade and I'm the founder of Black Heights uh, where our vision is to help African-Americans, uh, you know, basically have upward mobility in management and leadership positions around the world. And we do this by training, coaching and providing exposure to top level business professionals. If you look at the Black Heights YouTube channel, uh, you will see that I interview business professionals in corporate America or either any field of study or any field of work that they're in um, and bring that exposure to you um, mm -hmm. really to help uh, educate others about how how to navigate the way, way to success. Um, I'm also an area sales director for a company called Each to Open. Uh, that's my corporate job, what I do in the full time. Uh, I have over 14 years of management and leadership experience, mm -hmm. and I've been really effective, O'Shea, at uh, managing people and process to improve customer success levels, customer mm -hmm. satisfaction, uh, sales within companies, uh, growing bottom line as well, too. So that's what I've been really effective at. And that is uh, that is Antoine Wade, man. All right. Don't forget to throw in that, uh, that Georgia Tech NBA. <laughs> You know, yes, I, I, I do have an MBA from uh, from Georgia Tech. I had, did my uh, undergrad, my university at uh, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, where I majored in computer science and management information systems. So, you know, I started my early careers as a software engineer uh, doing the, uh, the coding on a day to day basis, um, traveling around the world, being at customer sites, doing implementation. And then I moved into the uh, support role and customer success role, and now I'm in sales. So I've basically been in a uh, a leadership development uh, program within my corp within my corporation, mm -hmm. and that's allowed me to uh, move on, move around, and um, move to other countries such as Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And now I'm on my way to the sweet C suite, my brother. And not only on my way, but I am. I'm a CEO of my own company. So uh, that's a little bit more about me, Oshe. Okay. Okay, let me uh, kind of re recap here before we get into some of the things we talked about as on a macro level, um, yes, some things that African-Americans can do as a group to be successful in corporate America. Now, you know that my channel is mostly mainly men, but let's kind of recap on some of the things you talked about. And we'll kind of make this show for the brothers today and ask some of the questions that they may have. Uh, based off of uh, your last video, but let, let, let's talk. Let's just go over a recap of some of the things that you thought that were pertinent to talk about today. Yeah. So that previous video, I talked a lot about perception, and that's the number one rule, right? It's how, and, and you think about perception is how people see you, how people hear you, and what the how people feel you, right? The energy that you put out, and that's very important. And and then we went into you know, based on perception, how you can control the narrative of that perception, right? And a lot of it has to do with your your appearance, what people see from you, right? How to dress and things like that. And, you know, we talked about understanding the company's policies. We also talked about being moderate and being at your best. We talked about communication, what people hear from you, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, speaking English, you know, communicating pre pre precise and concise communication and using proper english right using uh not using slang and things like that that you would talk around with your homeboys and your homegirls and things like that it's just making sure that you're using your 
the situation and making sure that you uh, 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 the situation is uh, uh, apparent at that point in time to use the proper English. Right. And and really, at the end of the day, it's about this. Uh, O'Shea, it's about knowing the game. Right. At, at the end of the day, it's knowing how to play the game. And all this is is teaching others how to play that game. If I was to kind of go into the next steps, O'Shea, um, uh, it would be around how to interact with your peers and your seniors and things like that. And we can go into that when you're re ready for it, brother. Yeah, that was a, a recap of the, the last video in a quick 90 seconds. All right. OK, Let, let's talk about this. You actually made a video um, on an article. And I will have to say this, and, and I, I hate to admit this, mm -hmm. uh, but. The video that you did, which was very well done, it was called How Black Women Can Be Discovered in the Workplace. Mm -hmm. And I find it fascinating that black women uh, care so much about themselves that now it, 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 in, it, they actually were giving tips to one another. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's let's talk about that just as a whole. Like, why is it that black women? If, if they feel that they are not represented in the workforce or represented in the certain situations, how is it that black women can somehow find a way to stick together and get themselves into certain situations that they would not be in if they didn't say anything? Yeah, if I was to say, based on my experience, O'Shea, on, on black women in, in general, here's the thing, right? Black women are facing a double edged sword within corporate America. One, um, there's so much that are against them, but they still seem to be making it and continue to 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 uh, enter the leadership positions at a fast rate. And a lot of that is because of diversity initiatives and things like women in network. Right. You see not just only black women sticking together. You see that women in general sticking together. Right. You think about the Me Too movement. That's been huge. And what you see, you see the same sort of thing within corporate America as well, too. Right. Because there are a lot of programs and a lot of initiatives that are out there for 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 women in general that um, that really helps them focus on what it takes for them to move up to the to the higher levels within uh, uh, corporations. Right. So if you think about from a statistics perspective, there aren't any black women today that are in a CEO position in a Fortune 500. There, there is none. There's men. There's about three men that are in that, that position at this time right now. But there's no African-American women. But you do have women who are in senior vice president roles, executive vice president roles on their way up. And mm -hmm. this whole diversity initiative is actually helping them come up that ladder. Right. Mm -hmm. And climb that ladder. Um, if I was to say why black women stick together, because they're 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 on their own in the most part. Right. You think about it. Right. From a, 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 who are they working with? They're working with a lot of Caucasian males. They're working with a lot of Caucasian guys. The thing of or, or, or black guys as well. You think about it from a black male perspective. The thing that we have to deal with is from a black male perspective in corporate America is just not fitting in with that group of white guys. Right. Maybe mm -hmm. some white women. Black women has it like this, right? They they not only don't fit in a lot of the times with the the white guys, they don't fit in with the white uh, women as well. A lot of the times they don't fit in a lot with the the black guys, right? So there are certain things that are completely against uh, 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 black women within corporate America just make it so difficult for them, and they understand that, right? So they mm -hmm. team together to really help with that image and it's really helping to uh boost diversity within corporations man Let, let's talk about uh about about black men i want to kind of use him as a um as a as a uh as an example yeah um this article that uh you did a response to and it was written by the harvard business review did you, you wrote this one right yeah yeah it's called the uh so the article was basically called the black ceiling and why African-American women aren't okay. making it to the top in corporate America. And it really just goes into some of the things that are against them. And if you think about it from the CEO perspective, our last African-American CEO for a Fortune 500 company, excuse me, guys, was uh, Ursula Burns. Right. OK. She was the uh, CEO of Xerox. And. You know, when she left the company, I believe it was in 2016, a lot of people were 
wondering if there was going to be another African-American woman woman that was behind her that was going to take that role in a CEO suite. And the narrative behind it was that, no, there wasn't, right? There was not one. And Ursula said for herself is, is in how she grew up, she grew up in a single parent home. Her mom washed clothes and, and things like that, was a, a caretaker. Uh, she went to uh, public schools, but she really focused on her education. She was in STEM, she was in math, all mm -hmm. sorts of this sort of stuff to get a higher education. But it takes years in order for you to get to the C-suite and you have to continuously build on it. And what her thought process was, was that, well, mm -hmm. one, corporations aren't focusing on the, um, the, the, the uh, unprivileged individuals. Once she got an opportunity because she did an intern, or internship, so her corporation started to invest in her and continue to invest in her. But she was in that role for working for Xerox for over 17 years before she made it to the C-suite. And you don't have many African-Americans in that role today or mm -hmm. taking that path today, right? So that's uh, that, that was kind of what the article was about, sir. Okay, let's transition that. And, uh, and we're using them as an example because, you know, my audience is specifically black men. Yes, sir. One of the things you're talking about in this, uh, this video is that these black women, when they were interviewed, 59 of them, I believe, yep. they sure. had a problem getting noticed. Yes. Going from unnoticed to getting noticed. Yes. Now, there are some other things you talked about, taking higher risk, um, overcoming the fear of being scared. You talk about your own personal situations about what happened in Malaysia. We'll talk about that too. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, a lot of black guys, uh, brothers, when they get jobs, they might be decent performers, might be over performers in certain aspects. But are they getting noticed? Let's talk about that. How, how does one do this? Yeah, I think uh, to get noticed, it starts with this, right? Kind of going back to our previous video, it starts off with getting your foot in the door and, and controlling the perception of you, right? Mm -hmm. When you're first coming into any sort of role, you still have to think about that. Perception is absolutely everything. It's how people see you, how people hear you, and then what the energy that you bring out or you put out as an individual, right? So those are the three things. And a lot of that is controllable, um, uh, O'Shea. So let me l let me just go into another part of this of of how African Americans can men can help themselves become more discovered outside of the controllable perception piece of it. Right. Okay. The other piece of it, I would say, is how to work with people. Okay. And that is that is very important. Right. Is how to interact with your peers or how to work with people in general. Right. Um, here's the thing. You want to be friendly, right? You want to bring a positive energy and you want to be that person that others want to be around, right? I know. Say it again. It's Say it again. Say it again. They didn't want to hear that. Say it again, brother. You have to be friendly. Okay. You have to bring a positive energy and you want yep. to be the person that others want to be around, right? That's just what it is. That's how to interact interact with people, it's how to interact with your peers and so forth, right? You mm -hmm. have to be friendly, guys. I know a lot of the times, even myself, right? There's times I don't want to deal with the people. So I walk around with a little bit of a harder face, right? My hard face is like this. And nobody wants to deal with me. I travel a lot, right? And you know, and the thing is, you can control that too, uh, O'Shea. When I'm getting it on the airplane and I really want to focus and I don't want anybody to talk to me, I have a little bit of a harder face. But when I met that, 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 in a mindset when I do want to be interactive, when I have to turn it on, you have to have soft in the face, be a little bit more friendly, have positive energy, have a positive body language, right? So people can be around you. Here's the other piece of it too, right? Mm -hmm. Especially in corporate America, guys, okay. or in any job, don't get too comfortable too comfortable with anyone, meaning you don't want to be the gossiper. You don't want to have loose lips. You don't want to tell people anything that you don't want to be shared with the rest of the office or anywhere else, right? Mm -hmm. So that's another piece of it as well. The third step, if I was to say, um, be curious, guys. You want to know something about everybody that you're working with, right? I said, be friendly. So let's just say, from in my example, I came in as a software engineer, okay, uh, working for a company, and it was about six of us that joined the company at the same time. I'm the black guy. We had a um, a Puerto Rican named John. We had another. Um, a Peruvian named Vadek. You had an Indian lady named Chital, um, a, um, a, a Irishman named Stephen, and you had uh, a, a, a American Caucasian um, named Garrett, right? 
And every single day, these guys decided they wanted to go to work. I mean, to lunch together, right? So mm -hmm. I had to be part of the group. And I was part of the group because we all came in together. We were working on somewhat of a similar project in a somewhat of a, um, uh, in, in a similar room, right? I had to be curious about these guys because that's how you learn so much about people. Be curious, want to understand what the story is. And what you're going to find out, the guys, is that they're dealing with challenges in your in their lives. This is the same as you're dealing with challenges in your life, right? Mm -hmm. There's always family issues going on in other people's lives. We have that perception that people have it better than us. Mm -hmm. It's not the truth, guys. It's mm -hmm. not the truth. So be curious. What I would also say is this, guys. Be professional at all times, right? You will have people try you. And I know this is something that uh, 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 is going to come up, especially in corporate America or anything else. You're going to have people to try you, right? You're going to have people that's going to think that they're smarter than you. Mm -hmm. You're going to have people that think that they're going to be better than you, mm -hmm. right? You're going to have people that don't potentially include you. Mm -hmm. Challenge yourself to remain professional at all times. Oh, so you did a, a, a wonderful video the other day uh, talking about um, you know, the strategies of, of when to say something, when not to say something. Mm -hmm. um, it was that uh, video that you put out about uh, uh, the situation that you and I had talked about. Right, right, the right. Racism thing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and you hit on some very good points on that, right? And here's the thing, right? You're going to get challenged. Guys, have a tough skin, have a mm -hmm. thick skin, know when to deal with it, when, but always stay professional, guys, at yeah. all times and assume positive intent, right? Mm -hmm. um, what I would say, if, if something does offend you, check it. And what I mean by checking it, just have a side conversation. I'll tell you something that happened to me in grad school. Okay. Um, I was struggling on a uh, an assignment and it was something where we talked about uh, the rise and run of a slope. I haven't been in math for years. And an individual, he was a Caucasian male, uh, he's a friend of mine, you know, he made a comment while we were at lunch. He would have said anybody who's struggling on something like that probably shouldn't be in this program. Right. And when he said that to me, it got under my skin. Right. It was almost like he was taking a shot at me. So what mm -hmm. I said to him, I can remain professional. And I just said, so what are you saying, uh, Paul? Are you saying that I shouldn't be in this course right now or this class? You don't think I'm fit for being in this class? And it really shocked him. Right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he had to come back with an answer. No, I'm not saying that, Antoine. It was just it was just a sarcastic thing. OK, at the end of the day, I checked it. I controlled that situation. I still remain professional. You yeah. know, there are times you're going to want to go off the horn and give him the middle finger and curse people out. That's mm -hmm. not it, guys. That's going to look bad on yourself. So keep the emotions from out of it. Check it if you need to say something, because silence means acceptance as well. Right. If you're going to remain silent on something and somebody says something, it, it means that you're accept accepting it. And the last thing what I would say to O'Shea is this, is uh, be participative, guys. A lot of the times we feel that we're on the outside uh, as an African-American because there's not very many of, it, of us in these positions, wherever you're working for white class, color, blue color uh, 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 positions or, or jobs, right? Um, be participative, guys. Go to happy hours. Have lunch with your friends. Have dinner. Now, there are certain things that you need to do to control that when you do go have lunch and dinner and stuff like that and how you can make sure you're doing more listening than you are speaking because you don't want to embarrass yourself um but you know those are the things that i would say uh, uh o'shea right be friendly don't get too comfortable with anyone right don't be that gossiper be curious about people wanting to know their story continue to be professional at all times um be authentic as well right mm -hmm. know your strengths guys you got to understand your strengths um you know, if you don't know your strengths, talk to somebody, talk to your mom, talk to your cousin, say, what is it that you think I'm good at? For, for instance, when I look at O'Shea and I've watched his videos, dude, you are a great moderator. You are a great questioner. You're a great listener because you have an ability to listen to what people say and make a response. And sometimes that's very difficult to do, depending on who you're talking with. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but pulling the message, but, but understand what your strengths are. And be authentic to it, guys. I know a lot of this is very difficult. You walk around and you see people on YouTube or you see people that are, have it going on. And you're like, gosh, man, I need to change this. This is about myself. No, you can change or you can modify. But just be yourself, guys. Be authentic. And last thing I would say again is be participative, brother. Be participative.
All right, that was a lot of good information there. Let me go ahead here and just shout out a few people. And I want to kind of build on some of the things you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, shout out to uh, the brother Will Willie Little John. Thank you for your ten dollars super chat. The Black Sector Investor, Master of Craft Brothers. Thank you so much. Uh, and now let me just say this real quick. Uh, we know that corporate game isn't for everybody. This is a That's very okay. niche particular show. OK, if you don't want to get to be discovered in the workplace, there are some brothers in here that do. So I know that most people are appreciative of this. Before I can say this, if you're a person and you want to have like a negative comment or something like that about, you know, then just realize this show is not for you. You don't have to come in uh, with such uh, energy. So we're just saying that for those people in the future who might want to do something like that. So let me just kind of get back to this real quick. Um, you talked about wearing the happy smile. Yes, sir. All right. Now, I know that every day you don't feel like doing it. Yeah, of course. Uh, let, let's talk about that, because, see, there are some days where things are easier um, because you're in a good mood. Mm -hmm. Corporate America or any job or even on YouTube. Um, you Because you, this is sort of you know my job to a certain position. I have to do things even when I don't want to do it. How do you keep that particular energy up on the days where someone's sick, daughter's sick, you had to argue with your wife, all of these things? How do you muster up the strength to still do that and perform? Because, you know, other people don't give a fuck about it. I mean, excuse my language. They don't care. The outside world doesn't care. They want you to perform anyway. How do you still do that in bad circumstances? I would say this, you, you have a goal, right? You, mm -hmm. you, you have to continue to focus on your goal. But the most important thing is understand this, Oshay, and understand this to people who are watching this in the chat, is you are your own brand, right? And brands are either good or either bad, right? And you are your own brand. You represent yourself or you represent other corporations and things like that. So, you, you know, you have to you have to bring it. You have to know when to turn it on, Oshay. You just have to. Right now, I know there are times where, you know, your daughter's sick, your wife's not uh, doing well. You know, you're probably going through a divorce or things like that. And these circumstances do affect you. But if you have a goal and you have a mission, just stay on it, guys. You have to stay on it. And that's the thing, right? It is about what your mission is. Don't let any of the other stuff sidetrack you. If you know for sure what your mission is and your goal is, continue to go after it. Continue to go after it. You know, you wake up and you have a stomachache. You know, I have issues like that when, when I'm dealing with a lot of stress. But you know what? That doesn't stop me from getting up and knowing where that I have to, you know, make dollars for my family in order. For, I have to sell a software in order for me to have the quality of life that I want. Um, you, you just have to have something that you're after, O'Shea, and that's going to give you the focus, to continue to build that drive towards whatever it is that you want to accomplish, guys. I, 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 there's there's always going to be challenges. There's no perfect time to do anything. Matter of fact. I think about this. I tell you a quick story, right? Mm -hmm. um, back in 2014, that's when I entered the grad school. During that first semester, uh, my wife and I got pregnant, and my daughter was born um, within the first semester. And she was born with a heart condition, right? Um, mm -hmm. And she had to have open heart surgery within the first uh, three months of having life, and it was a major open heart surgery where she was in the hospital for about 19 days. I know my goal was to continue to study. I could have gotten, the, I got the pass to, you know, drop out and continue to focus on my full-time job that I had, um, working, you know, 50 hours a week, going to grad school uh, on the weekends, dealing with a, a, a wife and a daughter who's in the hospital for 19 days. I was at the hospital every single day. I didn't sleep very much, right? Um, I didn't pull out. I talked to my, 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 uh, my group mates, I've talked to the professors and I said, Hey guys, this is going to be the situation. I promise I won't miss any class. I'm going to continue to attribute. Everybody pitched in to help O'Shea, mm -hmm. even if I didn't need them to, they still pitched in to help and understood it. You know what? My focus was getting out of school. I was staying, going to stay in school and I was going to, you know, push for that VP position that I really wanted. So I had to stay in school. My focus was on my family to make sure the insurance was going to be there. And, you know, we had the quality of life. My focus on my daughter to make sure she got the, the help and the care that she actually needed. Mm -hmm. And it all worked out, brother. But I had a focus. Right. I know what I wanted to accomplish. And I said, 
even in the toughest times, mm -hmm. I was not going to let any of this set me back. I wasn't mm -hmm. going to let anything set me back. My daughter, she's four years old and she's the healthiest she can be. She was uh, she had to get a pacemaker that she's going to have for the rest of her life. But guys, there's people dealing with tough situations all the time. Stay focused. You have to have something that you're going after and you have to stay focused on what it is that uh, you really want in life, man. No, I man, that is definitely uh, uh, a really, 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 really a good, good example of of staying focused. Even you know, I mean, a congenital heart condition, something like that. Yeah. Wow. I mean, and, and and still, you don't let it, um, you know, let that bother you. Let me shout out to a brother uh, that's been here for a long time. Uh, brother, wake the hell up. He says, and I, he said he, he gave a super chat yesterday, but I missed it. Let me go ahead and read it to him. He says. Uh, here, master your craft and acknowledge the learning profession you're in so you can uh, grow your success and eventually run a business. Shout out to the guests on the panel. And guys, to, to, to subscribe to Brother Black Heights, all that you need to do is go into the description. His link is there. But let me kind of uh, go into um, something that I know is kind of black male specific because you'll have some people that will say this. Listen, you know, Brother Antoine, um, I'm kind of thinking about going into management because you said on this particular podcast, um, take risks, right? You need to ask for more responsibility. Uh, and I know when I was working like in, in, in some corporate jobs before, you know, the supervisors, in some cases they will be on salary where the employees will be on hour, hourly and with bonuses, they could actually earn more money than the supervisors depending on the situations. Yes, but sir. a lot of supervisors uh, did not really want the extra responsibility because yeah, they know how to, they can perform themselves, but then taking the responsibility of other people was something like, I, I don't know if I really want to do that. You know, um, I, I, I would like to be discovered, but do I want to take this responsibility of, you know, taking risks because what if these people fail and I'm failing and I'm out of a job? Let's talk about this risk taking strategies and, and how did you know that you wanted to be in charge of teams, in charge of stuff like that? Let's talk about that. Yeah, so absolutely, Osha. Great question. Um, I would say this you want to continue to move up in the world, you have to take risks. You have to put yourself out there. You have to learn what it is. First of all, you have to have a goal. Right. You have to have a goal on what you want to go after. So I'm going to preach this all the time, guys. You have to have something that you're going after. Um, I wanted to go in management because I felt like I can relate to people. And I would say, quite honestly, it's where the money is. At the end of the day, it's where the money is. You can make a whole a lot of money within a management position. Matter of fact, the management field in general by 2026 is supposed to grow by 700 or 7 percent or something like that, creating okay. over 216,000 jobs by 2026. Right. Wow. That's where the money is. That's where you want to be. So being a leader of people and not being just a follower itself. And that's what we teach at Black Heights. Right. It was part of the training. Um, it's part of the uh, the coaching that we do. And it's part of the exposure. So let's talk about management itself. Right. Mm -hmm. You, you, you want to be an effective manager and part of being an effective manager is getting results and keeping people. And I learned that very early within my career because I wanted to make a lot of money. Right. So I asked to be a manager. Um, I was uh, a project lead at one point in time, mm -hmm. working and, and spending a lot of time on a road over projects, but not directly over people. I said, OK, well, I'm on my way to the C-suite. I was 24 years old at the time. I said, OK, well, I went to my boss and said, hey, um, I think I want to go into the support organization because that is an area that I think I can personally fix. I'm always helping them all the time anyway. So why don't I bring my leadership over there? I asked for that role. He said, I don't think it's going to be good for you. So I asked the, 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 the director in the support organization. He said, Antoine, we will certainly give you a shot. I asked for that position. Let me give you something else, right? Mm -hmm. When I was in grad school, um, I went in with the goal to be a VP by the time I came out. Uh, before I graduated, we, I graduated in December 2015. By September 2015, three or four months before I graduated, um, I was already working for a new company. Okay. Um, I was a vice president of customer success and customer support. Mm -hmm. And my first day of the job was on my birthday, and they sent me to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Okay, I went out there. Uh, found what was going on within the operations, talked to a lot of people, 
And guess what? I came back with a lot of information. Three months later, mm -hmm. uh, after I graduated, um, we had a big issue within the company uh, with attrition. A lot mm -hmm. of people were within the Malaysia office was um, was resigning, right? Because they felt like we were we were you know offshoring a lot of it to India. They felt like their roles and responsibilities were diminishing. And it was a big problem. And we had a GM who resigned, right? And uh, they didn't have any leadership in the office. So they were looking for somebody to go out there. And I said, all right, well, why, 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 why can't it be me? I enjoyed my time in Malaysia, never been there before prior to that, to, prior to the uh, time starting, but I asked for that position. And guess what my boss said at the time? He's a uh, you know, CEO of our company. He said, Antoine, that's a wonderful position. Did they talk to your wife about it? I said, no, not yet, but I will talk to her. And I talked to my wife about it. It was the best decision that we ever made. Now, think about how that set up. I asked for it. Now, there was a big risk there, me being put in Malaysia, only being with the company for a total of six months, mm -hmm. right? And completely falling on my face, not knowing the culture, not knowing the people, mm -hmm. not knowing the whatever I was gonna be taking on outside of what they told me. Um, I went there with an open mind, learned a lot and I killed it, right? By the end of the time, you know, I left there in July of last year, uh, Malaysia is our biggest office. We moved our office. Um, it's 109 employees. When I had it, it was 84. Um, and I got promoted to go into the sales organization, right? So you have to take risks. You have to do things that you're not very comfortable with. You have to ask for things, guys. And it's part of just knowing what you want, right? Whether that is women, whether that is where you want to be within five years, whether what, what, what do you want to be within the next hour? And just knowing what you want and asking for. You'll be surprised if you are professional, if you um, communicate very well, if you're really good to work with, you're going to get the yes the majority of times. And don't be afraid of the no. If you don't get it, you can get it some other time. Right. But ask for those things. Take the risks. Learn. Uh, be be uncomfortable. And um, I can tell you this, you're going to get, uh, it's going to help you grow in life in general. That's going to be the, 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 the least thing that happens, but it's going to accelerate your career growth just like it accelerated mine, O'Shea. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me kind of talk about um, some of the other things that are written down. I want to thank yeah. you guys for being in here. Get the likes up on the video. Um, a lot of brothers I noticed uh, thank you for the coolie high 489. When, when we look at black men, and obviously you're African American man too. Yes, sir. When I, I, I when I look at black men, I don't see like oh, okay, the ability's not there or the willingness to to go out and work is not there. But I think that in, in corporate America, what black men think is like, oh man, like you know, I am afraid, like, you know, if, if I, I'm somewhat fearful mm -hmm. that I know that I could do this job, but I mean, you know, like right now I'm, you know, I'm making more money than probably what I want to need to do. And if this doesn't work out, then what is next for me? You know? So let's talk about, you know, the, the, the overcoming of being afraid. And I know that you're, 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 you seem like you're very fearless in what you want to do, but how do you have that mindset? that okay i know things may happen but i can overcome the fear of of, of accepting the new challenge mm -hmm. let's talk about that yeah i would say this right um you know fear is something that stops the majority of americans from doing what they want to do uh unfortunately it's built into our media and our media sells based on fear and and uh um you know i don't want to say well fuckery right um, <laughs> right, right, yeah. at the end of the day, this is what it is, right? Uh, you know, here's the thing. The majority of Americans haven't even left the state that they lived in, yeah. right? It's because of fear. A lot of it could be because of capital and things like that, right? There is nothing that you're going to learn without fear being in place, guys. So here's the thing. Just do it. And that's what I love about the whole Nike slogan is you just have to put yourself out there and just do it. And what you're going to find out, you're going to learn. All right. And a lot of it is just about this. It's about experiences and wanting to learn. Mm -hmm. Right. I grew up in a small town called Orangeburg, South Carolina. And I can tell you this right now, man, the majority of my friends who stayed in, North, in, in, in Orangeburg, South Carolina, they're doing well. Right. 
but a lot of them still have that same mentality mentality of the same things that they grew up with right they didn't they didn't get exposure to the other ways of doing things that other countries do mm -hmm. other states do other mm -hmm. people do other religions and things like that to build that experience and build that wisdom that they're going to have for the rest of their lives right your fear is is something that i don't look at at all right i say this i'm just going to do what i have to do but for people guys if fear is stopping you from doing something um just, just, just look at it this way. Uh, if you fail at whatever you do because you try, it is right. a learning experience for you. There is yeah. something that you're going to learn from that failure mm -hmm. uh, that you're going to be able to leverage to cause success or improve your successes in the future. If you think about the majority of people who are successful, the only reason that they're successful is because they failed the majority of the time or many times right and they learn and say okay you know what um i didn't manage my finances the last time i need to really watch that i really need to watch my expenses uh going into this next position or i really need to watch my expenses on this manufacturing uh, uh product that i'm going through right or, or that, that i'm implementing or whatever it is right you, you learn and then you implement and then you execute guys so you know fear uh, yes, it's always within all of us where your options, mm -hmm. your options should always say yes, especially if it's a good opportunity and just do it. You, 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 you're going to learn, guys. You're going to learn something. And, and that's that's part of experience. And that's really what's going to help you. You grow in life in general, my man. Let me let me kind of uh, switch gears. I want to get to the attrition piece. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, attrition for some people may not know it just means that. Um, they can't, the company are even some schools have high attrition rates. Some medical schools, people are leaving and not staying with the company, which exactly. you know that's bad, right? right? So you you have to come from I don't know where were you living in America at the time? Yeah, so I was living in Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, uh, okay. So yeah, let me ask uh, you right at Georgia Tech. Right, right, Georgia Tech. You're gonna go to Malaysia, and you're 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 moving to a place where the company has a culture of attrition. Mm -hmm. How do you win those people underneath you? Uh, are, are those people who are your equals? I don't know how the system was, was set up, but how do you run these? Uh, how do you uh, get people? How do you change the culture there? And how do you win people's trust to people can be so comfortable to say, okay, since Antoine is here, I know that this is going in a different direction. How do you do that? Um, and, and, and you're walking kind of into like a landmine in certain situations with the attrition rate being high, how do you, how do you change that culture? What do you, what do you do? Yeah. So one, when I think about, uh, uh, and, and I would say this, O'Shea, um, I didn't necessarily change the culture. What I did was I influenced the culture, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, what I learned was this, and, and that's just part of being a leader. When I think about being a leader in, in, in our last video, I talked about you and the ability of um, people to influence others' behaviors. That's what a leader is. So I was able to uh, bring my leadership to influence the overall behavior. Here's the thing. Um, what I learned with our, co our, our company culture within the office was that they're very passive. They're willing to accept anything that came their way. And a lot of it was harsh. So they didn't speak up. They didn't ask for a lot of the stuff, right? And of course you have um, the uh, our, our India culture within at our, at our company, they're aggressive. You know, a lot of the times they would say yes to everything, even if they would not or could not accomplish it, right? They would always say yes. And that's just, you know, the culture in general. So of course, whenever you say yes, um, a lot of the times that's where work goes, right? So Malaysia was off on his own little island. You know, a lot of work was going over here to India and the Malaysia culture was being left in, in, in the dark, right? They were like, oh gosh, you know what? We're offshoring and, and this and that and the other. So I went there and I just sat with the leaders that uh, was in my organization, understood where they was coming from, understood that it was uh, a, a passive culture. And I said, I'm going to be your spokesperson. But before I can do any of that, mm -hmm. I was just able to build trust by working with them. And just like I talked about how to work with people, guys, be friendly, right? Be curious, um, uh, uh, be participative. 
uh, respect their culture, respect the way how they do things, even though they're passive, that's un that's that's fine. But now they have somebody who's there, who's not passive, who's aggressive, and who's going to be that spokesperson for them. And it just built a level of trust, O'Shea, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. this culture, and they began to follow me, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was a spokesperson for the office. I was the person that was communicating to the, our executive team and saying, you know what? No, we don't want that project in India. We want it here in Malaysia. No, uh, when we close this office down, um, we're going to uh, 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 bring those people or hire in, in, in Malaysia because the cost of resources is, is, is quite lower than in the U.S. Uh, we're going to shut down our Singapore office and bring that to Malaysia as well. Before you know it, we grew the office, you know, over 40 plus percent. Right. Um, it, it's, it's what it's really about. It's just working with people uh, at the end of the day. O'Shea. We have to find ways to work with people. And that's not just our own people, right? It's it's with everybody. That's the thing, right? It's about people in general. A lot of the times we go through life, and especially in a black culture, people are talking about, oh, it's about uh, your performance. No, at the end of the day, it's not. That probably used to be the, the situation. It's not about performance, guys. It is about the people that you're working with and how you can get things done with people, right? So I brought my uh, my leadership there. And was able to accomplish the goals that I need to accomplish because I was able to work with the culture mm -hmm. and uh, become the spokesperson for that culture. And we had some great success, uh, O'Shea. But mm -hmm. what I would say is, is if for the people that's watching this, guys, um, understand what leadership is. And a lot of us have it, whether whether we are influencing our children's behavior or influencing our friend's behavior or influencing others that watch us on YouTube. Right. Understand what leadership is. And one of the things that we teach within Black Heights is situational leadership. And part of part of situational leadership, which is a leadership theory or a motto that's been around for a long time. Right. It's withstood time. It's right. The only if you were to think about the world today, O'Shea, the only thing that's constant in the world is change. Right. And the situational motto says this there's no one size of leadership that fits all so you really have to treat people of, uh, of where they are at that time based on their performance and based on their readiness to execute specific tasks mm -hmm. right so i went to malaysia understanding what the performance readiness of my people uh, of the task at hand that we needed to accomplish mm -hmm. and really change my communication style to these people uh uh uh, uh, uh to help execute what we needed to execute. And what I mean by change my my communication style is this. When you hire somebody the first time, right, you bring somebody into a role, you don't treat them the same exact way as you treat the people who's been with your company for a long time. And what I mean by that is this, right? You give them more directive. You say, this is what you need to do. This is how you need to do it. Mm -hmm. If you were to give that same sort of instruction to somebody who's been in the job for four years, who is a high performer, you know what they're going to say? You're a micromanager, right? No, you want to delegate to the person who's been at the, you know, the company for a long time is really good at their job, right? So it's really about situational leadership. And I will uh -huh. say what I was able to bring uh, to the organization, look at every single individual, the performance readiness, the task at hand, mm -hmm. and just execute that, right? You execute that, right? So that's how that's how I was able to have success. And that's how other people can have success as well, too, brother. How how are you able, because um, I, I noticed, and I, um, I always wanted to be like a general manager of like a football team uh, in yeah. the NFL, right? And I kind of when you think situational leadership, and sometimes when I look at you know ESPN and I see, uh, you know when the draft is coming or certain cultures, I'm like, yo, this like this GM is stupid. He has no idea what he's talking about, and 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 um and so I, I guess I want to talk about that also. You're talking about situational leadership. Number one, were you the only African American that was in Malaysia at this time? Or yes, so I was the only African American that was in Malaysia at that time. Yes, okay. absolutely. So why I was there, uh -huh. we brought um, Essence Nance, who is on the Black Hypes channel, talking about her experience as a uh, a senior accountant. Uh, in Malaysia, she got an opportunity because of the success that I had. And mm -hmm. not only that, the uh, ability that my company has and the want for them to uh, bring exposure to African-Americans with the diversity initiatives, but also just um, uh, 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 our leadership development program. So, yes, 
I was the one at the time when I first got there. But uh, on the tail end, six months before I left, we brought in another African-American there as well. And she was a lady. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's interesting because like, OK, for example, like on my site, right, when it comes to like, you know, uh, Rom or Alan or Donovan, I never have to really tell them anything because I know that they're good at what they're doing. So I never tell them you need to turn your, I don't, I don't have that problem. So, uh, it's, it's, it's funny. I've never heard of this leadership theory, but, um, now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, Oh, okay. I didn't know I was using it myself, but let me kind of get to this with this situational leadership theory. You're there. How many employees are there that you need to kind of look over? Yes. So at the time it was about 80, 89, I believe. At 89. The time so I right there. Yep. 89 people. Mm -hmm. How do you gather the data on who? Because there's 89 names you need to know. Mm -hmm. 89 probably roles or some are different or the same. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of moving parts here. How do you how do you how do you be able to implement the situational leadership on 89 people, mm -hmm. people you've never met? How do you do it? How do you gauge it so quickly? Yeah. So. Here's the thing. When you're going into a position like this, you have to be prepared. So I had to hit the ground running uh, from when I first got there, O'Shea. Right. It wasn't anything that I had to do beforehand. It was something that I did when I first got running. And what I did, O'Shea, was I spoke to everybody within the office and I asked questions. Hey, what are you good at? What are your interests are? Um, how long you've been in this role? And a lot of this information is coming from HR too, right? So I have this whole spreadsheet with picture, people's uh, pictures on it, their names on it. Of course, the names are things like Hawk Leong and uh, Su Fong and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, 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 and I'm not really good at names, but uh, you had to have that information in front of me. And then when I, when I was able to sit down and talk to people, I really was under, able to understand where they're where their performance assessment was based on what I thought. And then I was able to talk to the managers to really show them what situational leadership was, right? And have them give a performance assessment as well and on a task and really teach that to them as well. And not only that, we didn't just teach it to the leaders within the organization. We teach it to everybody, right? So I said, guys, this is this is my leadership style. This is Antoine Wade, right? Mm -hmm. um, this is how I lead people. It's a model that's been around forever. It's mm -hmm. taught into Fortune 5 accounts. I mean, you'd be surprised. People picked up on it really, really fast. People knew exactly what it was, whether they were, it, it, the concepts are the same, right? People who come into a position, you want to be more directive, right? People who's been there a little bit longer, uh, you want to give them a little bit of sales approach, right? After they've been there really, really good and a high achiever, but not as confident with what they're doing, right? You can start to be a little bit more hands off, but you still want to be somewhat directive. If they are self-sufficient doing what they think, leave those guys alone. Have those guys, you know, come and bring you uh, a, a um, uh, task and things like that and have them make their own decisions. You just check in with them, right? Those are the, the people that you you want on your team the majority of the time. Unfortunately, that's just not what it is. There are people that go uh, 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 up and there's people that regress as well. So you really want to watch the regression. That's the model, right? You really want to watch the regression. But so the, 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 what I'm saying, O'Shea, is that I explain what it was to the organization really fast. And you can do that within a matter of five minutes, mm -hmm. right? Have people go and do their own research about it. I talked to people and I was able to implement it, right? And uh, people understood it, right? Before you know it, people are like, oh, well, uh, this is something that uh, I was always using and I heard of it before, but never thought about situation leadership. And that's just what it is, right? It's just common sense, to be honest with you. And that's how I was able to pull it off, O'Shea. Uh, sitting down, talking to people, understand what the performance readiness was, understand the task that they had to execute, what their roles and responsibilities were, and then uh, uh, putting my strategies, uh, working with managers to have them watch it and have me watch it as well too, man. Uh, let me kind of get on to this. And guys, thank you for being here. We have 121 people watching right now. I yes, like sir. for you people uh, in the chat, you great people who are here today. I know that, uh, you know, a lot of things going on right now in, in the black YouTube space. But I wanted to kind of get back on this month, back to some of the strengths of the channel. I know like these videos typically don't get like, you know, five or six thousand people in the chat like the other hot topics. But it's the best information there. So I would like to see you brothers out there who appreciate this kind of content. Why don't you go subscribe to Brother Black Heights uh, YouTube channel? Uh, three more will get him over to about 200. So I would like to try to get him within the next month up to a thousand subscribers so his channel can go ahead and blow up. Because, again, we want 
the we want people uh, with the talent in Black America to do what? Be wanting to produce content for us because they know they can be successful in this market. So the one way that we can show um, the best of, of, of Black America, uh, Black Americans, especially some of those that are, that are young, is we want to be able to subscribe to their channels, watch their videos, and tell what people about them. Because we want to be able to say, okay, you know, at the end of the day, this brother knows that he can come and he has a built-in audience that's, 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 that's willing to, you know, take the information and help him grow. And as brothers like him are growing, we can bring in more professionals uh, that would like to talk to us and share some of the good information with us. So, but we need to first invest in the subscription. Subscribing to the brother's channel is right there. 202 subs. Thank you, brother MK team. Please tell me that you subscribed in the chat. I will shout you out uh, before the show is out. And I do thank you. And hit that notification bell. Um, let me kind of get back to this uh, point because I got a lot of things uh, written down. Um, you, you did talk about the personal one-on-one -on -one discussions here and on the personal uh, video you did. Um, you talked about asking professional guests, but one of the things that you did mention is uh, working on your weakness or weaknesses rather, and then using that ability to make them stronger. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I found that as a, a, a very, very, very good, good statement. Mm -hmm. So I want you to look back at yourself if you can. Yes, sir. Uh, kind of take. Uh, in, in retrospect, looking back at, at Antoine Wade and his management style, what are some of the weaknesses that you can see or that other people saw at you at, the, at this time that you were struggling with in Malaysia or prior? What were some of the weaknesses that you had? Yeah, I was, uh, I, I was at one point in time, Moshe, um, I wasn't as confident as I am now. Okay. And not the person that spoke up in, in, in meetings, right. Uh, in corporate meetings. Uh, I was a person that, um, always listened very well, mm -hmm. but just getting, having that ability. Cause a lot of the times I'm the only one, right. And mm -hmm. being a representation and knowing what that means is having the confidence to speak up and raise my hand and to give my opinion. And a lot of the times it's different from what is actually being heard guys. Um, so that was a weakness of mine is the confidence to speak up, right? I always had confidence in my own way. I, I carry myself very well. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, it's the ability to speak up and to communicate. And not only that, other weaknesses that I had uh, that I would say was my writing ability, right? I, I, I do write very well, but also at the same time, I think I can improve it. So what I did was uh, if, if guys subscribe to the Black Heights uh, newsletter, mm -hmm. uh, you will see it on the, 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 the logo that's going to run. I write an article just about every single week. And what, why did I, do I do that? It's to improve my writing, right? So that's what I do. I work on my weaknesses by doing things that's going to help me improve it. And that's what I think people need to do towards the weaknesses, right? Whether mm -hmm. it's public speaking, whether it's getting on, 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 on TV, on an O'Shea blog class, and, and figuring out how to capture the audience's attention. Mm -hmm. how to use hand gestures and things like that. You got to practice it, guys. You have to practice it, right? Mm -hmm. um, every single experience you have, it's going, to, it's, it's going to improve upon the next, but you have to be willing to invest in yourself to do that. So yeah, those were some of the weaknesses that I have, and I still do have, O'Shea. Um, people mm -hmm. can probably look at this video and say, gosh, this guy uh, doesn't communicate well, or this guy <laughs> doesn't do this and that well. That's fine. Um, I know what my weaknesses are. I know what my strengths are, and I'm going to continue to improve upon my my weaknesses by doing things like I said, uh, writing more, or um, speaking more, or um, uh, 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 whatever else that I see as weaknesses. Continue to build that up so that I can become better all around. Right? I think I think there's there's something about being well rounded in everything. Right? Um, obviously you don't want to be a jack of all trades and you can't be a jack of all trades because you're, you're no good in just one thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But I do believe in being pretty well-rounded across the board in a lot of things. And, uh, part of that is just working on your weaknesses, my man. All right. And focus Ooh. on what those are. Okay. Okay. Shout out to brother Matty ghost for the two hour super chat. Good to see my brother, uh, 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 China Newton MGTOW. We're up to two twelve. All right. So I am happy about that. Uh, and let me go ahead and subscribe on my main page to the brother. Make sure you guys hit the bell. All right. I really want to make sure 
that you brothers can do that. Now, let me kind of go back in and, and, and kind of go to the strengths, because in the video, I believe that you said something to the effect of um, work on your weaknesses, but then use your strengths and then actually try to make them stronger. Let's talk yeah. about um, the the looking back at, at, at yourself in retrospect. What were some of the things that you were strong on and in strong in rather? Mm -hmm. and, and then how did you use those strengths to open other doors for yourself? You know, in the future. Yes. So um, some of the things that I'm strong in. Uh, O'Shea and the people that are watching is uh, I have a presence, right? I, I would say that. So I have a deep voice, right? So mm -hmm. I capture people's attention when I speak. Okay. Right. So how do I, I have to polish this a lot of the times. And part of that is by slowing down my communication and enunciating my words. Okay. Those are some of the areas that um, I can get better and build upon my strengths, right? Good voice, uh, good ability to communicate, but how do I make it stronger? Enunciating a little bit better, slowing it down, using more hand gestures, things like that, like I'm doing on uh, a live on, on live YouTube right now, right? Those are some of the areas. But what I would also say about my strengths is this, right? I have an analytical background, mm -hmm. software engineer. I look at things from an objective standpoint for the most part, mm -hmm. and that just helps me uh, really become more factual with things. I want to see data. Right. So a lot of the times I go into positions asking leaders within the organization, what are my objectives? What are my key performance indicators? Right. Uh, and what I mean by key performance indicators, those are KPIs for uh, the acronym um, uh, for, for people who don't know what those are. But every position that you're in, you should have something like this. And what you basically can do is you can ask for what they are and try to meet and exceed them. Right. And you tell you know, your bosses and whatnot that, hey, if I'm meeting the CG's expectations, does that mean I get promoted? I want to be promoted, right? I want to be promoted within X amount of time, every two years, every one and a half year. So when I know if, what the key performance indicators are, I'm going to go directly and, 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 and kill those, first of all, and then ask for more. So a lot of it is is knowing what your strengths are. A lot of the times people just don't know what that is. And how do you how do you understand what your strengths are if you don't know what that is? Mm -hmm. Ask them. You can ask your mom. Right. Mm -hmm. You can ask the people that you're working with. You can ask, you know, your your best friends. Mm -hmm. um, just ask people what those strengths are and say, um, you know what? Uh, yeah, those are my strengths and, and, and improve on those over time. And you can do that by watching YouTube videos, watching O'Shea, uh, reading books, uh, putting yourself in situations with less fear. And that will help you improve on your strengths as well, my brother. OK. OK. No, no. Really great. Really great. Let's talk about. Um, lastly, you talked about establishing this professional network, a lot of brothers, a lot of guys, you know, if they're, uh, you know, work functions that are like work dinners. Mm -hmm. uh, I was always a kind of guy, uh, to be honest. And I had no intention when I worked for like Tesla because I, I know I wanted to go to medical school. Mm -hmm. And um, so for me, I had no, you know, I, and maybe I probably had the wrong idea, but I never really wanted to do like the after work things or some of the stuff like that. And I didn't notice that people who took advantage of those things, mm -hmm. they got a lot further than me in the job. And then you also talked about, you know, taking opportunities to go to the work dinners, the work stuff like that, the, you know, the things to meet other people and get other uh, positions. And then you also talked about how this helps you establish a healthy professional network. What's the importance of going to the work functions and, um, you know, stuff like that, in your opinion? Yeah, it's, it's one to understand what's going on, to understand the opportunities that are present right to understand your people right and that's the thing guys at the end of the day it's about people it is about people and how you relate to people and how you can influence people guys it is so important um what i would say though is is this O'Shea, putting yourself out there into these sort of positions man is going to increase your network your network is your net worth over overall and people People just don't understand that. And, and I heard it before. Mm -hmm. I've heard it before. Uh, but I don't think I really took it serious until some years ago. And let me just give you an example of how 
how I've been able to just land in certain positions and get opportunities from people who aren't like me. And I must say this, the majority of opportunities that I had in life that's come my way has happened from somebody who wasn't an African-American. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, my family, I'm talking about outside of outside of the family environment in corporate in corporations or when I was working for Menards as a blue collar worker and things like that. The majority of the opportunities have have come to me from individuals who aren't like me. And the reason how that's happened is because I got the opportunity to know them. I got the opportunity. I, I, I showed what I was strong in. I asked for more and things like that. So let's talk about those those dinners. You don't want to go. You're going to go home. You're going to do everything else that you typically do on a day to day base and you aren't going to learn very much at all. You're going to watch YouTube, blah, blah, blah. Right. Is that creating an opportunity for you? No. Go out there because everybody you touch and everybody you have an interaction with is an opportunity for you to create an opportunity. Right. Mm. And when you're at these functions, because I, I want to go into this and this is somewhat of the, the bonus of my class that I teach on uh, the playing the game within corporate America. Um, you want to participate in the lunches when you go out, the dinners and all this other stuff, right? And in in corporate settings, a lot of it, or just in work in general, you have a lot of segregation within uh, certain organizations. Um, when if there's a large cafeteria, even in school, right? Let's just say somebody who's in high school right now and they have a pretty diverse. You have tables. You have your black table, your Asian table, your Indian table, your white table, and so forth, right? Diversify your dining experience, guys. Because it's going to be an opportunity for you to learn something about somebody else who's probably going to be able to help you in your future. When it comes down to social hours, guys, be on your best behavior when you're on these when you're at these social hours as well. Have one or two drinks. Do more listening than you are or speaking. When you talk about yourself, talk about something that you want people to notice. Because a lot of the times when we when, when, when we are asked to go to these social events and we choose not to go. You're, you're missing an opportunity for you to show what's likable about you. It could be that you're a Dallas Cowboys fan, right? But you're controlling that perception. If I go and say I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan and that's what people know about me, at least they know something about me. They're going to say, oh, we walk in the room. Oh, Antoine, how's the Cowboys doing? It's a conversation starter and so forth. It's how you meet people, right? How you can engage in conversation, things like that. But over social hours and things like this, guys, you want to maintain your level of professionalism. You want to have one or two drinks. You don't want to be the guy who gets turned up, right? Because you're going to embarrass yourself. And the biggest <laughs> thing that I'm seeing a lot of the times, guys, mm -hmm. especially as an executive now, is that when people get the opportunity, they disqualify themselves. Whoa, uh, talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about they that. They disqualify yourself. Here's an example. Okay. I took my uh, team out in Bangalore, I believe it was in uh, before I left uh, in February of last year. We had this gentleman, I'm not going to call a name out, but um, uh, uh, he went around and there was this uh, uh, shrimp cocktail that had an olive on it. And he decided that he wanted to uh, take the shrimp, eat the shrimp and put the olive back onto the same plate where other people are picking off of. Right. It completely disqualified him in, in, in my mind going forward for anything, because that's just not respectful. Right. No, no manners at all. Don't disqualify yourself by doing things or saying things that's just going to disqualify you. Here's another example. My boss told me this one. He said he was at a happy hour one day and it was this gentleman who was a white male. Uh, he had a team of about 16, right? They're telling stories about all the things that they did in university and all the drinking and all this other stuff. This guy told a story about uh, how he was in a frat and he was, you know, pretty much inebriated that night and a, a girl vomit, right? And one of his frat buddies uh, dared him to eat the vomit, right? And he ate it, right? And he told, he said this story in front of the boss my boss completely disqualified him for the rest of his career, right? As long as he was working, he was not going to get any opportunities. So guys, just know that people are watching you at every single moment, right? So you just have to be at your best and know that people are watching, right? So have one or two drinks, do more listening than you are talking. Don't disqualify yourself. Don't do the stupid stuff. Don't try to be the guy that always flirt for the women at work. Um, you know, don't, don't be that guy that I, I'm a big fan of you don't date anybody within your workplace. Preach, people brother. Do it. Preach, brother. People do it all the time, Joe. My my boss got married to his wife from work and, um, you know, but it, people do it. My rule is you keep that separated, guys. You keep right. it separated. And really, be smart about it. Don't, don't, uh, don't disqualify yourself before anything happens. And a lot of that, again, is about the perception, you know, how you can control that stuff. 
you want to just be on your best behavior, guys. It's like it's it's no different than you meeting your your uh, your girlfriend's father for the first time. How are you? You're gonna walk around. You're gonna be standing tall. And you're gonna be you know whatever the situation is. Be authentic. Be yourself. Be cool. And uh, just don't disqualify yourself. And things are always gonna work out for you, man. It's gonna work out. I can tell you this. I'm I, I, I'm the experiment, right? I did it. <laughs> and, and shout out to also the brother Wayman Brown. I forgot about his super chat. Good, very talented brother out there. Wake the hell up again, doing great things. Big up, O'Shea's brother. Thank you so much. And Maddie goes, I I agree. He did two two chats, one of two bucks and one of five dollars. I agree. Getting on streams with Reds the bad guy has helped me improve with voicing my opinions. My gamble on hemp is paying off on Shay. Hey man, yeah, you told me about that. Shout out to you guys. And a lot of you brothers have really been so uplifted. You know, I know there wasn't um, a lot of people because I think YouTube will hold my notifications back over here. On my other channel, probably would be a little bit better. But I can, I do appreciate that the brothers that are watching, <clears throat> um, that are here, because uh, again, this is a topic that's not for everybody. Antoine uh, Black Heights YouTube channel is not for everybody. But the thing about it is, when Black Heights gets a subscriber, he knows that he's getting a subscriber. It's a good, warm subscriber, right? It's a good, it's a person that wants to be there. Yep. And 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 this is a important with a lot of YouTube content creators because we're operating, let's be honest, in niche markets. We're we're on niche agendas. So a, a lot of uh, a topic, while well, I do with black men as a whole, you have black men who have their own positions, black men who have no interest in this. So we're dealing with corporate America, African-American men, and those who are interested in that, this is a niche group that we're looking for, Okay. And we're trying to get our brothers who are wanting to go in this uh, career and this goal. Uh, hey, these are one of our own African-American brothers that is doing this. He has an MBA from Georgia Tech. He's been all over the world. He's been uh, using certain strategies that can do what? It can help elevate you brothers that are interested in going in this. So yeah, I don't have a, a lot of skill set as a manager of corporate America. I worked in corporate America as an employee, right? But if you want to reach to those levels of the CEO status of upper management, as uh, Brother Antoine calls it, the sweet seat, right? C suite, C suite, brother. Sorry, C suite, brother. Yes, the, sir. Of the, uh, the C suite. Oh, yeah. White man, hold hold my uh, tongue back. So uh, <laughs> we want you, brothers, to get you over to this channel, and I want to acknowledge all of you. Let me just see who has not subscribed yet. Let me go ahead and put there and those on the restream. Want to thank you for listening. Who needs to subscribe? Uh, and let me know. And let me also say this: Is there any other stuff? that you want to uh, uh bring out in in while we're here i would say this guys thank you so much for watching that last video and subscribing all right it, it means a lot for uh for us to have a professional network continue to grow the professional network guys um i i, I see and i'm getting a lot of support for african americans and not just african americans but just people around the world who want to see uh more african americans in corporate positions and management leadership positions guys um, that's a one way that you can actually help increase your wealth. I, I am that person. Um, learn whatever you can within the jobs that you're in, especially in corporate America. It can teach you so much skills, guys. I'm going to leave corporate America one day because I have to focus full time on the Black Heights and the Black Heights Initiative, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, but I, I'm gain, gaining my skills by you know leveraging my corporate America experience, guys. And not only that is... I'm able to network with some of the best and brightest minds across the world by doing this so as well. So thank you guys for subscribing. I've gotten a lot of people who've actually subscribed to the newsletter. Jump on the Black Heights website, uh, HTTPS, BLK Heights uh, Go to the subscribe or the newsletter. I write something every single week and it's about leadership, management, supervisory, um, good things that people are doing around the world from African-Americans. And it's, uh, I, I appreciate your guys' support, man. And also one last thing. Sure. Um, I am an author. I wrote uh, a book called The Individual Development Plan, and basically it's a four-step process to uh, help you achieve the you know success uh, within your careers. Anybody who emails me at Antoine.Wade at BLKHeights.com, that's Antoine.Wade at BLKHeights.com, uh, it is free. I will send it over to you. Right now it's on my website. It is $3.99. It's the cost of a Starbucks coffee, and I charge people because of the fact that if you're really interested in, in, in wanting to invest in your career and doing things better, right, that is comes at a cost, right? So don't waste my time. Don't waste your time. It comes at a price. But if you email me, me today, I will give this uh, individual development plan out to you for free. It's interactive. It's going to teach you a lot about your strengths, your weaknesses. You're going to have to sit back and think about this, and uh, it's going to work out, brother. All right. Okay, and then uh, so let me go ahead here.
And uh, I definitely appreciate you. Let me go ahead and look at and uh, fire. All of this applies in medicine, too. Yes, People sir. are always watching you as a black male. Great. Dad. That's an emergency medicine doctor that commented there. So shout out to Brother Andow. Uh, I, I got to uh, uh, pass my boards here. But, you know, I really thank you, uh, Antoine, because, you know, I know that you were for so long uh, a subscriber and we would go back and forth on email sometimes. And I was really wanting you to come on uh, to the platform. He's like, well, no, not right now. You know, but <laughs> so you finally did. And really, I think the brothers like you is opening up a whole new uh, way for for this sector of black YouTube, which I, let's be honest, black YouTube is um 97 percent toxic. You know, I mean, it is a it is a place full of uh, full of bullshittery in certain in certain pockets, a lot of pockets. But, you know it's rejuvenating to see that we can give spaces to some of our best people out there that really want to see black people win. They want to see, you know, the, the, the brothers that, that are, you know, big brothers that are, that are, uh, uh, African immigrant brothers that you, uh, and, and they come on the channel as well, the Caribbean immigrant brothers, and they, they soak up, soak up this game because a lot of times in certain spots and we don't, we don't know this. And I, I found this out from my brother, uh, my brother, Chinook McTowell in, in London, they don't have podcasts like this. All right. Mm. They don't provide this kind of information to the black, black British guys. A lot of Nigerian American people, they don't provide this kind of information for, you know, stuff like that. So when it's African Americans is, is, is when we put out there, you know, everybody, all the other black groups, uh, they're listening in and, and they're able to come in and, 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 and participate and apply this to their lives. And they appreciate it. So all of our black brothers out there, whether you're from America or from London, are you from you know African American or, or uh, other black immigrant groups, you know, we we challenge you to also get involved because uh, a lot of you have information you can contribute, and, and it's helping brothers all around the world. And you really don't know the impact, brother Antoine, that you have with the knowledge that you're sharing with a lot of these brothers out there that have these questions, but maybe can't figure it out on the blog, but they want to see it and hear it for somebody who looks like them. Yeah, yeah, and I would say this, O'Shea. Um, you yourself, man, your, your, your platform and you just being a great leader and uh, and not only that, just putting this sort of content in your channel because of the exposure. Right. Um, thank you so much for always having me and being open to having me on your platform. Um, it, it's been much appreciated. And uh, thank you guys for watching the show today, man. Sure. You okay. there? Yeah, the white man was holding you back, brother. What happened? What you say? Oh, no, I was saying, oh, straight. thank you so much for. Uh, uh, for really having me on your platform, guys. I mean, like you had, you have no idea, Oshay, of the the how many people that watch you. I came across a guy in, in in within Malaysia when I was out having cocktails one night watching you. Man, I was like, oh, you watch Oshay? He's from Ghana, right? <laughs> okay, you, you okay. Have, you have a big audience around the world, and the influence you have. Um, what you're doing is absolutely fantastic. Bringing entertainment, bringing educational stuff. Your platform is big, and I really appreciate you having me on your your. Um, on your platform and uh, helping us make a difference, brother. That's what it is. It's about making a difference step by step to make it uh, to, to, to so that people can have success within life, dude. So, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. Antoine Wade, check me out on Black Heights YouTube. And uh, I'm sure we'll be talking again soon. Very soon. Very soon. We'll be, uh, be tomorrow at the Super Bowl, but we'll have brother, brother Antoine in sometime in the week. I want to start bringing him on as much as we can. It was a busy schedule. I think this kind of content as we push again. Thank you, brother Antoine from Black Heights uh, YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe. I will be on another stream in about two hours, brothers, on the Hall of Game. So, guys, thank you so much again, brother Antoine. I appreciate you, and uh, thank you, guys. See you guys a little bit, a little bit. Awesome. Thank you so much, O'Shea. Bye bye. Peace.